Hey guys, what's up? This is Evan. Today I have a tutorial on using Screen for in Reason. This is one of my favorite stock plugins with Reason. It is a powerful distortion unit that can do a wide range of different types of distortion. It's theoretically also a guitar amp simulator, but it's terrible at that. Nonetheless, I think it is one of the most powerful and useful sound shaping tools that you have at your disposal. I love it. I use it all the time. Don't think of it simply as a distortion unit. Think of it as really a sound design tool. So before we jump into it, what we're going to cover today is the major functions of the screen. You've got the knobs, the types, the cut, and the body section. Um, we're going to listen to some examples of that after we go over what they cover. And then at the end, I'm going to show you three really cool tricks you can do with screen. So before we go any farther, just want to ask you to like and subscribe and leave any comments about how you like to use this Scream unit down below. If I missed anything, please let me know um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so Scream is theoretically a distortion unit. So just as like a basic example, let's listen to this. I've just got an acoustic guitar loop uh, with no Scream on at all. It's five times. No Scream. So you already hear, you can quickly get into really crazy tones you wouldn't have imagined. Now let's actually look at what all these knobs do and then we'll listen to some examples and I'll show you how to tweak the sounds and then the advanced tips. So the first thing you have here is the damage. This is basically the amount of distortion and the type of distortion and that will turn the section on or off. much difference without the damage button. So this then controls the amount of it. From here you have a knob that chooses the type. You can see there's actually three columns here. The leftmost line is the type of distortion and then these next two columns here represent what, what parameter one and parameter two knobs are controlling. So if we were to select the tape plugin or the tape emulation, parameter one controls the speed of the tape and parameter two covers the compression amount. And the damage control basically controls how much tape is being applied. So let's listen. It's a slow tape with a lot of compression. No compression. But at low levels, it can sound like a really good tape emulation. Or if we were to go to, uh, for example, digital, this is a bit crusher. So the right one controls rate and the left controls resolution. Oh yeah, isn't that a beautiful jam there? So as you can see, the left side is really where most of the tone shaping is going to come in by choosing the right model that you want and then tweaking the parameters and mixing in the right amount of damage. This next section here is an EQ. So if, it's, if the cut button is turned off, then it's not working. You gotta hit the button to turn it on. You've got low, mid, and high. This line right here is sort of the mid one. Finally, we have body, and this is sort of a cabinet simulator here, um, a, like a speaker cabinet simulator. It's not a very good one when it comes to actually simulating speaker cabinets, but it's a really cool sound design, design tool. Um, 
sorry, I was a little parched and a little in need of caffeination. This is exhausting work here. So you've got three buttons or three knobs here once you've turned the body section on. Resonance, scale, auto, and type. So we'll actually move from right to left um, because this basically selects the type of cabinet that it's modeling. I don't really know what each type is technically supposed to be, but let's just listen to them by sound. It sort of goes from least extreme to most extreme. Um, and we'll just put a little more damage on so we can hear. So I can't really give you any, like, hey, this is a Fender Deluxe Twin here. I don't think it's doing any of that. You just sort of have to trust your ears and experiment, which is half the fun of this. So from there, we then have the resonance. And this is just like when you sweep a filter. This is how resonant, how big this peak is here. Um, let's not turn the EQ off. Um, so. The next thing is scale, which I don't think actually, I think it partly moves the frequency, but it's not just a filter sweep. Uh, let's just. shapes the sound of it, I guess is, but it's not quite boosting any frequency. It's, it's not just sweeping a frequency. It's more than just that. Finally, we have the auto, <clears throat> which functions like a, I, th I think it's really functioning like a envelope gate or a filter gate uh, so that the input signal will trigger the scale to move. So let's just listen to the scale movement. <laughs> You see the movement of the scale sort of creating that whine sound, and so auto will automatically. So there you have it. Those are the, and then you've got a master knob. Those are the major functions of Scream. And also they kind of vary based on what body type you have selected. Um, so you need to experiment with it a lot to get a cool range of sounds. But I just want to show you some examples from the presets and then we'll dig into the advanced tips. So just to show you sort of the range of sounds you can get. We'll just go with raw buzz. But it's awesome. This one sounds really good on the bass. This is quite a bit. So there you have it. Those are some of the basic sounds you can get. And you can also get much more subtle tones as well. Um, something as simple as like, like I was showing the, you the, um, the tape earlier. Um, so like, just slightly lo-fi. So 
So don't think of it as just for extreme mangling. Think of Scream as also a tool you can use for subtle warming. Now, to get to the three advanced tips on Scream, the first one involves hit, hitting tab to flip it over. And that's that all of these parameters here, not all of them, but a good number of them are automatable by CV. So what I want to do, we'll use the uh, Pulsar Dual LFO, and we'll just put the LFO to the first parameter here. And we've got a, let's do a synced saw, or a synced sign. And that's going to parameter one, which is, we'll do that on something that's going to be controlling the tone. And see by using Um, you can get some very interesting results. Let's shuffle this and then also put the second one to P2. And so let's turn the second one on. So we've got now two LFOs. You can also use this auto to control. So my second tip is to use the auto out, which is basically taking the peaks, triggering on the peaks of the song and using that to control these parameters. So when the song peaks, or when the sample peaks, you'll get more of a trigger. So we're controlling the damage right now with the auto. <laughs> The next tip I'm going to ha give you is that Scream is often best used subtly and as a tool in combination with a few other distortions. So let's delete this. Turn the body off. And let's just so you can hear it bypassed. And then what I want to do is add, after this, a amp simulator. An actual amp simulator, now that reason comes with it. And so this is like using it like a distortion pedal, basically running it into the amp simulator. But we'll want to do a cleaner um, tone because we're already getting some distortion. It might have been bypassed in cabinet section of the amp plugin or any other amp simulator, you can get a really good guitar tone through using the screen by stacking it. Um, but, and for many other things. Way better than you would if you were to turn the, amp, the cabinet simulator off and rely on the body. So that's the second tip for great uh, scream sounds. The other is to not be afraid to, we'll leave this actually, is not being afraid to stack distortions. So we'll also use, just for example, these, um, well you can stack screams even, but um, let's use the old school foldback distortion. <laughs> A pulver, I say. Nope, wrong button.
So there you have it. Don't be afraid to automate this screen. Don't be afraid to try combining it with other cabinet simulators and use it in serial with a bunch of other effects. And then you'll get even better, more interesting tones. I hope you like this. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below if there's anything else you want me to co uh, cover with reason. And I hope you have a great one. Bye-bye.